I'm Olivia Newman, director of Where the Crawdads Sing, and this is Tricks of the Trade. What's funny is I have this distinct memory of hearing her interviewed about the book on the radio. And I remember as I was listening to her describe the story, I just thought, oh my God, this is, this sounds so my kind of world. And then at the end of the interview, they mentioned that Reese had picked it for her book club. And I just, my heart just sank because I thought, well, she's gonna go make it into a movie and I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna wish that I could turn it into a movie. And then fast forward, you know, a year or so later, my agents told me they were looking for a director for this book where the crawdads sing, have you read it? I said, are you kidding me? That had been, that's been on like my, you know, top of my shelf to read. And I just, I've been too worried about my heart getting broken. <laughs> But I read it in two days. I could not put it down. And it was exactly what I expected it to be. I was so drawn into Kaya's story. Delia's writing was so lyrical and evocative and really put me in this very specific place through the eyes of a character that I had never quite seen before. And I just, you know, I was dying to see it come to life on screen. And then after I read the book, I read Lucy's script. And I was really excited to work with her because she's, she just felt like the perfect screenwriter to attach to this. You know, being from the South and also being such a naturally lyrical writer, she really was able to kind of channel Delia's voice into the script and, and be as faithful as she could, you know, to the book. So it was just amazing for, you know, the way that it kind of came full circle. I mean, I think that um, when I read the book and thought about the movie version of the book, I wanted to make sure that I capture the emotional experience that the book takes you on more than anything. You know, it's this epic story that weaves an entire person's life and it's heartbreaking, but it's also hopeful. You know, there's this driving mystery to it that kind of keeps you turning the pages because you're dying to know, did she do it, didn't she do it? There are these romances that are kind of, you know, also keep you at the edge of your seat to see what's going to happen with these different men that she meets. So I wanted to make sure that the movie followed that same sort of emotional journey. And then I think what's the biggest difference between the movie and the book is that I had the feeling that I really wanted as much as possible for us to be in Kaya's point of view and to follow the story in her shoes. I didn't want to leave her. And so rather than have the courtroom drama happen towards the end of the movie, I wanted to weave it throughout. And so, you know, we set the trial up right from the beginning. And so that way, whenever you're in the present, you're with Kaya on trial and you're sort of on the edge of your seat wondering, if, you know, is she going to get off or not? And then whenever you're in the past, of course, you're following her tale of survival and, you know, romance and coming of age. That differs a bit from the structure of the book. We had 12 weeks of prep. The first priority was finding a spot to build Kaya's house uh, because the first priority was making sure that we could shoot it on location in a setting where we could move from inside the house to outside and we could bring the marsh into the house. We didn't want to have to shoot her house on a stage. And I really admire my production designer, Su Chan, who found this location in a state park where when you looked one direction out into Kaya's Lagoon, it really took your breath away. You really felt like you were in the book looking out into the kind of landscape that Kaya would have you know, sat at her lagoon and, and looked out it. But when you looked the other way, it was wide open. There was this um, historic house, the Otis Mansion right there. And then there were all these big live oaks. And I just said, well, Sue, this is never gonna work. How are we gonna cover all this? And she said, no, 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 we're gonna get greens. We're gonna build the house here and it's gonna block a certain amount. And then we're gonna fill in with greens. And I said, but what about the path that Ma walks down? We have to have a path. You know, that image from the book was just, you know, it's one of those images that stays with you. And she said, no, no, we're gonna, we'll use the, you know, the curve of the branches of the oak trees and we'll create this path under them. So it was just one of those like, cross your fingers and hope it all works out. And it was magnificent. When I, still, when I watch the movie, I just sit there going, I cannot believe how remote it looks. The book was definitely our North Star. We returned to it over and over again for passages that you know describe the landscape because Delia is just such an amazing writer especially when it comes to capturing nature and wildlife and it was important that we find all of the different textures um, to Kaya's world and then 
Barclay Cove, uh, I would say, was probably the hardest location for us to recreate. It just is hard to find towns on the coast, um, right, you know, close to the beach like that, that still exist, you know, that haven't been developed. When we decided to shoot this film in New Orleans, we were looking for towns that at least had architecture that was of the time period and also felt small enough that you could imagine a, a town where everybody would be gossiping about the Marsh Girl and that you know everybody knew each other and there was that sort of sense of an intimate space. So we looked at a lot of different towns and they just felt too big. We really <laughs> looked high and low for the right kind of town and we found it in Homa which has these you know, storefronts that really feel plucked right out of you know, the 50s. Um, it it you know, feels very untouched. All we had to do was really dress the windows, bring in picture cars, you know, hide some modernities, but it was just absolutely perfect in terms of time period. We couldn't shoot in an actual fire tower. We couldn't get all of our equipment up that high, it wasn't safe. So we had to build that and we had to green screen that. And we actually found a fire tower that was built in the exact place where we would imagine this fire tower would be built, overlooking the marshlands, that wasn't even accessible by road. It was only accessible by boat. And so we went out to that location with a drone and we shot plates from that same fire tower so that you really felt the, the right height. We used it as a model for the fire tower that we built. So. It's funny because if we could have shot on the top of that fire tower, we would have. I would say, you know, shooting on boats was really challenging. Not only because like anytime you shoot on boats, you know, your crew is dispersed, your fleet of boats. You're not one boat, you know, you're, there's the picture boat and then there's the camera boat and then there's, you know, hair and makeup is on a different boat and props is on, you know, and, and it's, you're this fleet going out. But the bayous that we were shooting in, you know, the, the water would rise and fall and so, there were times where the waters just, you know, fell to a point where it was too shallow. So we would go out scouting and we'd find a location where we would, you know, set the scenes and we'd, Polly and I would shot list it in a very specific way based on what it looked like. And then the day before we were set to shoot, we'd find out the water was too low and we were gonna have to find another spot on the day and we'd just get out there you know an hour before the cast arrived and be going around in boats finding a place that was deep enough that sort of still had the same look that we needed so you know that was challenging there's so much story to fit into a movie kaya's relationship to the marsh and what she takes from it is hugely important. It doesn't have the driving force of the mystery and of the romances. I mean, those are really kind of what keep you engaged in the story, but understanding Kaya as a character requires that you spend time with her in the marsh. You spend time with her observing nature and, and her drawings. And so we had a B camera unit that went out and filmed the marsh whenever we did, knew we weren't gonna need a second camera. And we were very meticulous about scheduling days and looking at when we were gonna be on certain locations where we knew you would be able to get egrets and great blue herons and you know make sure that there was enough time to get all of that wildlife so that we could incorporate it into the film. And then, you know, for me, one of the most emotional parts of the film is, you know, the moment that Ma leaves and it's so vividly described. I mean, I think it happens on page one in the book. I really wanted to make sure that we got those details across the sound of the screen door slamming, the snakeskin heels and her blue suitcase, you know, those details that really just stick in your mind. You know, you have this image that you can't shake. And I, there were things like that that I just thought, we can't ever get those details wrong and there was a question about you know the vision that Kaya has of her mother whether it needed to be in the movie or not and to me it felt like such an important part of you know her whole story arc was um, that vision that she has and you know in the book that was a moment where I just lost it and <laughs> so I really wanted to make sure that we captured that I mean the other thing you know, that was hard to balance in an adaptation was there's so much history that you learn about Kaya's parents in the book and where they're from and trying to figure out how much of that we could get into the movie. And we, I think, you know, where we tried to layer that in was through the production design. Her mother comes from somebody from New Orleans and what we imagined when we were building the house and designing it was that perhaps Ma brought some furniture, you know, had some antiques and, 
at first tried to make the house really pretty even though it was just this fishing cabin. And so there's, you know, peeled wallpaper that you can imagine Ma put up and one wall that's painted, but it's now the paint is peeling and just, you know, remnants of a life that started out there with hope that her mother passed on to her this idea that, you know, even if you don't have a lot, you can take pride in, you know, where you live and what you wear and you can still, you know, take care of yourself and, and you know, carry yourself with, you know, with dignity, um, I think was, was really important to try to get through. There's so much in the dialogue that is um, a reflection of the character. So the way that Kaya speaks when she's a teenager, before she's learned to read and before she's really immersed herself in literature is very different from once she's educated herself, right? So, and Delia just does such an amazing job of capturing that particular voice and its evolution. So. You know, going back to the book again to look at the way that Delia did that was important. And of course, you know, Lucy added her own embellishments and, you know, sometimes we would have to add information that you can describe in a, in a novel in a different way than you can have to show in a movie. And Delia, again, she created these characters and really, you know, there's not a single piece of dialogue that I'm sure Delia didn't, you know, think about and write and rewrite uh, for a reason. And so as much as we could honor what she did so well, you know, we would, we would take directly from the book. And then of course, you know, if things needed to be changed or altered slightly, that was, you know, in Lucy's wise hands. Of course, there's a poetry woven throughout the book, both in the dialogue and in Kaya's observations. And whenever we could, use it for the voiceover or use it in the dialogue and you know where it felt natural and it made sense you know we would always go back to the source for sure